Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft Together. And uh, look at this, the bridge design from where the dragon is at the front of the town hall has now been extended all the way around the side here. It is looking pretty fantastic and I am so excited for this project because town hall is finished. That building right there, I know you can only see the front of it because it's massive. It is finished. We will be doing a tour through there in the future. I've got to hold a meeting in there. That is going to be so much fun to do. But right now at the beginning of this episode, I'd like to do a little tour and just show you something that is around the corner here. This path leads into the netherrack, then it stops, and then it kind of opens up into a really nice lush area full of grass. As you can see, some of the blocks are leading us in that direction. This is just a wonderful area right here. I love how the place looks when it is covered in grass. To be fair, it looks a little bit brighter on my camera account. I think I need myself a night vision potion because it's a little bit moody down here. But I love this. It, uh, it comes into an area with some really interesting builds. First of all, we've got this luscious garden here with some, some nether brick and nether brick fences. Really like the use of red glass and this symmetrical base design uh, leading to this area up here, man. Pretty cool stuff going on in this place. Ooh, I like the iron trapdoors. That's kind of similar to what I've been doing in my base, and I think that might even look a little bit better. Kind of makes more sense having iron in front of fire than wood, right? But uh, we're going to continue on our travels through here. This space is ripe for people to move into. If you're on the server and looking for a place to uh, to settle down, there looks like there's a lot of space around here, and it leads right up there to the elytra area. So over in this area, it gets a little more overworldy with the introduction of stone in this terraforming. And then there's this crazy river of lava coming over the side here. The block's being used. The palette is tremendous. There's soul sand, there's netherrack, nether warts, nether brick slabs, end rods. Ow! I'm getting myself set on fire there. Um, and fire and mushrooms and oh, it's just absolutely crazy what's going on here. Man, the front of this space right here looking fantastic. And as we poke our head onto the inside, you can kind of see someone's just getting started here. But I am excited for what they're going to do with this part of the base. Uh, got a super cool little bridge design leading over here. And then on this side, we got some creative use of armor stands. And of course, the book that we have introduced to create poses. This is wonderful right here. Uh, this is Ace's forward operational base. I like that. Very cool design going on here. A little bit of a nether wart farm using some end rods on the ceiling. Man, I like the layout of this place. This reminds me of old school Doom levels for some reason. I really like it. It's the corridors and the room effect, isn't it? Very cool stuff going on here. And the views in this area are just breathtaking. I mean, what is going on here? This garden is wonderful. So much detail. So many blocks being uh, placed down to bring this place to life. And then we've got a gorgeous tree just over here as well. And then a very interesting structure. But then the view from down here gets even more fascinating. I mean, this is some next level Minecraft right here. I mean, up the top it looks a little bit unfinished, work in progress. But look at that view as it dips down into that area. And this is some gorgeous building on the side here. But check this structure out as well, made out of M bricks and uh, nether brick. Those textures go together ever so well. And man, this is an awesome looking build. I want to take a look on the inside. I was here the other day. I I've already forgotten what it looks like on the inside because there are so many gorgeous builds on this server. It's hard to keep track of the place. But wow, look at the shape of this room. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's really nicely put into that space. There's a little storage area over the back here. And then you've got some stairways on each side going into uh, other areas of the base. Considering the glowstone is on the ground, I'm going to consider that this is still a work in progress. And they've opened up the back area over here. That's crazy. They must have big plans for this area, I'm telling you. Oh, here we go. Can I land safely? Whew. Jeez, thank goodness I remembered to, to put my elytra wings on. I've been running around without my armor. I'm a bit of a bit of a daredevil today. So this is Crafted King's base. Been approved by Ems. Awesome. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is this is just another amazing base on this server. Check out this storage room. This is really humble. I love the use of the red carpet as well. Really makes it feel like a home. Awesome ceiling design and those bone brick walls looking great. Again, all of this with the new resource pack. I really do feel like this resource pack is going to be great for the game. Builds are looking more interesting. Uh, 
Got some blocks missing over here, my friend. Got some blocks missing. They need filling in. Love the paintings. Got a furnace array set up over here. There's an upstairs as well. Someone's been having a good time uh, in the end dimension by the looks of it, gathering up shulker shells. And, ooh, the Achacha wood just behind there. And, yes, don't leave a comment saying... Oh, okay, brick wall. But uh, don't leave a comment saying I don't say Achacha properly. I say exactly how it's supposed to be said. And uh, this room's got a netherrack ceiling. You know, work in progress. <laughs> That's a beautiful home you got there, my friends. Beautiful home. And then look at this. <laughs> this is how you take Minecraft to the next level. Make the terrain look interesting as well. There's a staircase on the side there, isn't there? And it goes all the way through to that area. Well, let's wander up here. I didn't notice that last time. Oh, and it kind of leads through on this side as well. So there's a staircase over here going somewhere. Well, for now, we're going to check out and see what's up the top here. Well, it turns out uh, that it actually kind of just leads down to the same spot as you can see. And wow, the view from here is absolutely astonishing. I'll tell you, my friends, what we've created here together on the server, looking absolutely amazing. This is wonderful. <laughs> there is so much to see and so much of it is just looking fantastic. And there is a certain spot in particular that I would like to check out right about now. It is this place down here. This, my friends, is the First Church of Evil, the home of the Blood Masons, an organization we agreed to join without finding anything about. I think that might have been a bad decision. As you can see, the entrance to this place is marked by the blood on the ground in the area. And uh, it's, it's a very evil looking place. This is possibly one of the most evil looking buildings I have ever seen. The pews are built with anvils on the side. Spangleboo has been beheaded here. That is an interesting sight. <laughs> Baptismal fountain. Okay. Get baptized in lava, my friends. Jeez. There's a witch hanging out in this place. Goodness me. It's got to be evil then. A skeleton. A wither skeleton. And an evoker. The most evil mobs in this game. Absolutely wonderful. And, oh my goodness me. It's Evil X. Check it out. Oh, jeez. He would love to see this place, wouldn't he? And uh, this Vindicator looks uh, very <laughs> high priest annoyed. Very content in this little spot right here. Don't think he can see us because he's got glass wedged in his head. So why do I why do I seem to instinctively think there is something back here? That that is it. That is that is the, the altar of the church right there. And there's also these fellas just hanging out in fire as they do up the top, keeping an eye on me. He clearly wants to attack me. You're not gonna get me, buddy. Your head's your head's stuck in that cage right there. You can't walk anywhere on this server without feeling that feeling of hit and record because there's just amazingness going on everywhere. I've been waiting a while to do this. I wanted to walk through a particular area and uh, record some stuff. We'll be doing that again because we only saw a fraction of what is on this server, as you can see. Oh, it's amazing. This is Caxio's base right here. You might recognize this because Caxio is my neighbor. And at the beginning of this episode, what we are going to be doing is starting a new community project. I need to get to a particular part of my base to explain what this project is going to be. You know, you don't play on a server for 24 hours and there's gifts again. You, you people are too kind, I tell you. You're too kind. Anyway, we want to be heading up here. If you remember, we built this heads room. Uh, our Evil X head has changed. Oh, it's changed back. Uh, this isn't actually Evil X's head. This is another player who changed their skin. So when they change their skin... Um, it, yeah, it changes. I need to fix that and get an actual Evil X head. So we created this, and it was a spontaneous idea. I thought, let's have like a little thing in the middle. I don't know what you'd call it, like a little totem or something. And then it gave me the idea that we could create a gallery of what essentially could be like miniature stories, or you could even call them like pictures, 3D pictures, that tell a tale. This one tells a tale of uh, Ultimate Badass Andy and I Love Cats running away from a gar shooting them. And so I thought it'd be really cool to set up an area on the server where other players could start telling these stories as well. Oh wow, um, it's that usual occurrence of stumbling into amazing stuff on your server every now and then. Um, we found a food court, <laughs> I believe. This was supposed to be a food court. Looks like you can pick up some drinks as well. Got an armor stand over there serving you a potion if you need one. Uh, there's a link to the subway, that's super cool. And then somewhere around the back here, there is a corridor that we need to find. It is actually just behind here, so using my camera account I've been checking in what area we can build 
And if we were to take this little section right here and use it as an entrance to our new project, um, then we can go in that direction pretty much forever. <laughs> uh, there's literally nothing behind here at this height in that direction for ages and ages. So we'll use this as a tunnel. And uh, we use the width of this as well. So we're going to have a three or five wide tunnel that goes in a straight line in that direction. And then we'll create little areas on either side that players can claim. We're probably going to make the plots like seven by seven and then have a limit of, let's say, five or six armor stands and create uh, or the other players can create a whole bunch of little scenarios like I just did. So it'll be like a viewing gallery. You can walk down the middle and then on either side there are these little artistic pieces to check out. And this means that the players can use like a, a block palette to create some terrain and tell a little story with some armor stands. So we just got done with a wonderful live stream. I'll actually link to it in the description box. We had a great time hanging out together and coming up with this really cool design using some nether warts, some dark oak wood and some achacha wood right here and creating these plots. Now each of these plots have a specific size for the players who want to get involved. You're allowed to build within the edges of this cobblestone. You're not allowed to go where the netherrack is back here. However, I've created a cheaty exception for myself uh, in order to make my plot a little bit bigger because I'm going to be doing something very interesting in this space right here. Now while live streaming I realized that this could be a competition so after a certain amount of time maybe a couple of weeks uh, we will go through every single one of the builds here and then decide which ones we like the most. Someone is building a squiver fight down here that is a fantastic uh, idea but yeah I'm going to build mine and then I'm going to explain a little bit more about what's going on here. So as you would expect, things have been tampered with. No, it was not. And probably was touched. <laughs> uh, do not touch you here. You're breaking the rules, but whatever. So we need three armor stands and we need a head on the floor. That is going to be Liam's head, which is going to actually go, I think, right here, I decided. I was looking at the space that we have and figuring out exactly where this is going to go. I've just realized I could probably throw down some more redstone than just the one piece that I'm going to have right here. So this is a table, and now I am unfortunately stuck inside of the plot. There we go. And on the table there is blood, because behold, Spangle will be standing over here doing some beheading, and I have left my book inside of here. All right, is that pose good for what we want? There's the axe. And let's get the spangle head. I've completely forgotten about getting some clothes together. Uh, so I'll have to do that in a second. And I've set this thing up so it doesn't have a base plate. And gravity doesn't apply to it as well. Just in case something happens over here, it can stay in the exact same spot. So I guess the thing to do now is to go through all the poses and figure out which one looks the best. So that very much looks like the moment before the axe is swung down. The problem with most of these is that the legs make it look like you're running. So I think the first one that I picked was actually the best one. Now the next two armor stands are going to go behind that bush over here. We're going to have a couple of players cowering in fear at what they're seeing. Um, but before we get into that too much, we shall go and grab some leather so we can make some armor. Well, um, one of our faces is definitely shocked. The other one looks a little bit derpy in all fairness. And uh, they got some poses here like pointing and blocking. And I could have put more clothes on them, but you can barely see it. And uh, I'm trying to use as like minimal amount of stuff as possible, right? Uh, but for Spangle, it's going to be a full set of clothes over here. Some purpley stuff that gets slightly darker down to the boots. That looks pretty cool. And there you go, a scene of someone beheading. But I think there's uh, a couple more touches we could put on this. There is now a little extra blood on the ground because it's been a messy old job over here. And I've thrown in some vines as well to help mix the oak in with the leaves. And that has worked really well. And now it is finished and it kind of looks just like I envisioned it looking, which is fantastic. That makes me happy. And that is my one right there. Now, I mentioned it earlier that we could potentially turn this into a competition. That is exactly what we are going to be doing. So if you are playing on the server, you will have a week from when this video comes out to complete your little plot. And then I will personally be judging all of them and giving out some trophies for the winners. How many at the moment, I don't know, but we're going to introduce some more trophy blocks into the game. Now, at the moment, you can see that other players have come in here and that they've built... Um, some already so you'll need to probably build your own plot and that means just extending the design outwards and then creating the space for a plot so I'm going to dig out this one over here which hasn't been claimed yet and use it as an example to show you what size the plot needs to be 
So this is the space that you can use to build. The floor can be 5x5, five five, the ceiling 5x5 five five as well, and then the walls are 5x4, so they're only 4 tall. And uh, I'm talking about the space between the cobble, like this space right here is where you could potentially build. So that's what your plot will need to look like. Uh, the one behind me kind of shows you that when all of it's filled in. So just imagine that that cobble is just behind those blocks at the edges there. Um, so when you come onto the server, you'll need to extend the, the, the hallway, the corridor, whatever you want to call it. Build yourself your own plot and then you'll have, well, seven days from when this video goes out to complete it. And one final rule is that you're not allowed to use more than four armor stands per plot. As you can see, this one right here is using exactly four. So it's time for me to interrupt this episode and do as I so often do, announcing an upcoming event. This isn't going to be a live stream event though, this is just for the members of the Let's Play Minecraft Together server. We are having our first ever meeting as a community inside our new town hall building. This is going to happen at 2pm GMT, which is the same as UTC, the Universal Time Zone, and that'll be taking place on Saturday the 5th. So if you have any things you'd like to bring up for the meeting, uh, the way to do so would be to head over to the Discord channel and just tag one of the staff and we'll be collecting up people's uh, thoughts, ideas and opinions on things to discuss and creating an agenda for things to discuss in the meeting and then that will happen at 2pm. So head over to Discord if you've got any, other, any ideas, otherwise I'll see you at the meeting. So here's another event that we'll be doing in the future. We will be playing in the Elytra Arena. Uh, having a PvP deathmatch. And Pollyboy is one of the devs. He's here online on the server to set up a scoreboard, which you can see on the side of the screen. I don't know how all this fancy magic is being done, but let's see if we can get Cats to go inside there and see this in action again. <laughs> Cats knows he's playing along. Come on now. 9,000 deaths, my friends. And that'll count as mine. And look, it gets counted on the side. Awesome. Now uh, Polly can kill me, I guess. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> Cats has been teleported back over. And no one got counted, which would be correct, because Cats fell from a higher place. Let's see if Pollyboy's going to attack me. I did just request to get killed. It's an unusual request, I know. Is it my turn now? Yes, I'm getting shot with the Bow of Destiny. The Bow of Destiny didn't kill me. But full damage... W no, full damage won't. You'll have to shoot a few more times. This is hilarious. This is how stuff gets tested. You know, on the server. <laughs> it's as derpy as you can imagine. So we are underneath the Elytra Arena right now. And you'll notice there's this groove in the bedrock here. And if I hold a barrier, you will see that there are actually barrier blocks all across the bottom of the arena here. This is some pretty genius stuff. This helps us detect where the players are killing each other. So let's pop over to the spawn chunks and see the command blocks over there. So I'm not going to pretend like I know all of these commands and what's going on, but I know the most important part. And over here you'll see there's a sign saying Elytra Kill Counter. So it's these two right here. If we open the one at the back, there is something that quite obviously shows you what it's doing, right? So if we just go across here a little bit, you'll see there is this detect bit. And it's looking for a barrier block at Y0. So I guess that means when the player uh, kills another player, when that event happens, it has to also have a barrier uh, y0 which is pretty ingenious and then that means it can only be counted when it happens in the elytra arena so we can then go and activate uh, this scoreboard on the sign when we're doing our elytra pvp event which at the current time i don't know when that's going to be but it will probably be the weekend after next and in more command block news we've got an update to the mob silencer polyboy found the solution for this one as well let me first of all explain the problem uh, i created this system right here which is all good except the entity data command right here it will override information and one of the pieces of information we used over here was the tag silenced but the problem here is that it will remove any other tags and replace it with silenced. Now another system on the server that uses tags is the mob heads one so this means that there creates a conflict between it and uh, particular mobs like the toast rabbit which requires renaming and the way to fix it is to change this command entirely so we are no longer going to use tags what we're going to do now is look for a mob that has the name silence me we're going to silence it and then change its name to silenced which is really cool because then the player is going to look at the mob see that it's been silenced and that will confirm that it's done successfully 
and it won't mess up the tag system as well. So I'm now going to activate that and that is another problem here on the server fixed. So you probably know what it is time for right now. It is the hashtag my question part of the episode. So if you have a question you want answered, leave a comment down below, hashtag my question. This one is number 16 from Emerald Ian. We're going to have a read of this together. Ian says, I want to join the server, but I feel that if I join now, I will be starting from nothing and everyone has houses and diamond armor. Do you think I should join the server starting this late? Well, I, I would say that this is accurate. Everyone pretty much has diamond armor and housing and stuff, but that, to me, isn't a reason not to join in the fun and play. And also, I wouldn't say this is late. The server's only been up for a couple of months. This is early in the life cycle of servers, so there's still lots of time to play and do wonderful things. And personally, for me, seeing all of these wonderful builds around here and other people doing wonderful things on the server playing together that's inspiration and motivation for me to play so I guess it depends on the individual right like some people play this game in a progressive way where they want to build all the farms and other people having that stuff done uh, would demotivate them but for me um, it's all about playing together so we're going to sign off right here Mr. Uh, Hyena and me thank you for watching this episode hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like as always thank you for the support and I'll see you in the next one soon bye bye